Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. I hope everybody is doing well out there. Hi, you guys. It's great to see you in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. We got a lot of great and wonderful people out there. So we have Raven in the chat, Mark, Nomadic Engine, Joseph Benson as well. Vashti is here. Iamine Ahmed is here as well. Everybody is doing well out there. Lisa Post. Hi. Oh, good. We got people just moving right in. There's Miss Rose War and Joseph. And who else do we got? Oh, we said hi to Lisa. Hi again, Lisa. Oh, there's Miss Energies. Hello, hello, hello. It's great to see you guys. Zachary in the Zachary Z in the house. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lots of things going on, obviously. Um, so we have been just we just got done with um, meditation and mantras and qigong, some standing qigong, building the light body. It's so important in these times. You know, uh, a couple of takeaways that we want to reiterate is that, for one, change is happening very, very fast. And so that's a blessing when we're talking about a change in our consciousness. The, the globe is waking up. The planet's waking up at a big, big, fast pace. And actually f much faster than uh, the elites, the powers that be, would like. Yeah, I, everything's just moving in really fast. Uh, just rapid succession of things that are going on, events, triggers, um, all kinds of stuff happening. And I think it's almost going to be done on purpose to overwhelm our senses. You know, sensory overload can be a useful tool for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. So, you know, the, things are moving rapidly and there's going to be a certain series of events that are going to happen and right now we are like so close we are right on the cusp of things going to a completely different level and people really are changing our, our consciousness our dna is evolving so fast right now and i've joked with friends and stuff that i don't think we're, we're gonna need phones pretty soon i mean it's getting to the point where we're getting so intuitive. It's just, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, the veil is barely existent anymore. You know, m so many people are seeing other beings, uh, you know, out of the corner of, the, of their eye, like maybe in the past that happened to you uh, once here, once there, but now it's like every day. And also just even direct communication, becoming aware of all the, all the life that's around us on these different densities there there are there's so much life you know there's even like insects bugs on different densities um these little things that i run into when i work on people they are like little ticks sitting there feeding off the energy field feeding off of a off of a trauma or something of that nature um, and it's just becoming more and more evident things are really changing so rapidly um it's just incredible and so the message that we got today um is one that we'll share with you guys and it's a combination actually of uh, the galactic federation uh, with other sources as well and you know they're working very hard to keep this kind of under control or keep the the dark ones from unleashing you know total destruction which if they had their way they probably would uh they would most definitely try to manifest something like a nuclear war ex and all that but there are the light forces that are trying to keep that uh from not happening uh, but at the same time they it appears there will be a war you know it, it does appear they're going to be able to get that started um so we need to be as prepared as possible. Yes, you know, I mean, things are going to be kind of crammed in to a short amount of time. And then we're going to have uh, another period of time where things are going to be a little bit difficult. Um, 
But, you know, we've been preparing for this. We've been getting ready for this. This is our, what our mission is about. And when it is time, we're going to be there for other people to answer questions because a lot of people that are still asleep are going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. And uh, Nomadic Engine was talking about Cinco uh, G that has been causing flu-like symptoms in Northwest Florida. And doing the qigong and gathering the energy and the life force uh, i was telling cindy i'm getting like such a clear feeling that if we do things like that and we're building up the life force within our bodies nothing's going to touch us as long as we keep raising our vibrations up we we will personally be able to escape any of these you know things that are out there whether they be virus whether they be entities as well you know we'll stay above that and you know because we're getting to the point now where we're going to be able to do miracles on a daily basis we're going to be able to manifest positive change so quickly especially if a few of us just get together we can manifest positive change we have to recognize too um that the dark side's always doing their rituals always doing their quote-unquote magic uh, in order to manifest the negative reality for humanity, negative reality for the planet. And, you know, they're always doing their thing. And so more and more of us have to come online to put out that positive energy, counteract it. At the same time, we can't stick our head in the sand and say, you know, that there aren't things happening around us that are disconcerting because certainly they are and and there's a lot of things a lot of puzzle pieces being moved into place and you know, all you got to do is just look at the news and you know that uh the the war breaking out in earnest is imminent and okay <laughs> i don't know something's something was running on there cindy just had to excuse herself really fast but there's a lot going on right now and so you know let us send our energies out and i did see uh already in in the chat room there were some requests for positive energy and healing and that is beautiful and let us send everybody that needs love and he- and healing our positive healing energies and intention and uh, let us take a peek at some of the stuff that is coming out. See, Cindy didn't see all this news, um, but it, it does kind of back up what she's saying. And what I have been getting the impressions of is that we are, and I've gotten this message uh, during meditation, we're going to be witnessing the wars of the gods. We're going to be seeing stuff that's going to, you know, it's going to make a lot of knees weak. And just, well, just seeing the technology alone, because there's going to be a lot of ships in the sky. And, uh, you know, we have talked about Project Blue Beam and the fake alien invasion. Uh, but there's there's going to be actual real things in the sky. There already is. And so it's almost like there was, the way I view it is that we have been under the control of one, mostly one group of beings that are not really benevolent, not at all. Uh, In fact, they view us as just cattle, as assets. That's all they view us as is just assets. You know, that's it. They, They don't really care about us at all. But there have been beings in the past that took us under their wings like little children and taught us how the universe works and taught us, you know, how things really, really are and also helped us to live in harmony uh, and with each other and with all other life. Now, these beings, uh, the benevolent ones, and I've talked about the fact that in the... uh, in the Vedic line of thinking, the Kali Yuga started when Krishna left. And you know, that was kind of the end of the wars of the gods, amongst the gods. You know, we have all these legends of Imanas and even things that sound like they're describing battles with nuclear weapons. Incredible ships. And there's a lot of artifacts around the world as well that really lend a lot of credence to these things 
even the architecture, which in some cases seem to be patterned after these ships, these vimanas. Well, I do feel like the benevolent ones are close and we are rising up to a point where perhaps we will be able to kind of meet them. And this is Hanuman, who we've talked about before. In the Ramayana, Hanuman serves Rama, who is an incarnation of Vishnu, and helps Rama get the love of his life back, Sita, who was captured and taken by a demon, an Asura, uh, named Ravana. And interesting, because Ravana was the, the king of Lanka, which is modern-day Sri Lanka. And it has hit me that the Asuras, which are basically the bad guys in the... Uh, in the Vedic line of thinking, although it's not always 100% that case. Sometimes there could be entities of that lineage that are not as malevolent, and then sometimes, you know, vice versa. But Hanuman, it's interesting, people have conjectured, what was he exactly, you know, because he's, he is an incarnation of Shiva, but also, you know, it lends thinking to the lines of, you know, was it possibly an intelligent Bigfoot or something along those lines? What type of being uh, really was he? But he could do amazing things. But then there are what we have called demigods. And Genesis 6 even talks about the mighty men of old, men of renown. And that, again, is not in a negative sense. That's obviously in a positive sense. So... We see a lot of odd things. People have seen strange objects around the sun. Lately, there's been, you know, gigantic uh, blue spheres that some have seen around the sun in interaction. Uh, uh, Claudia Albers has talked about these stellar cores that have sucked energy off of the sun. And, of course, the sun is in a grand solar minimum. There's a lot of stuff coming out right now. And, you know, here we see talk again about off-world vehicles not made on this earth. And disclosure is, well, it's already came out. It really has. It's just there's so much going on in the world right now that a lot of people haven't noticed. But we've already got disclosure. We do. We've had disclosure. You know, it just depends on who do you want to listen to about it. Who, Who do you want to believe? And a lot of people feel... Well, to get real disclosure, it's got to come from like the mainstream, you know, which which is fine if that's your belief. Um, I just I don't believe anything that they're going to tell us, you know, about disclosure. So I think going through on your own, looking at the information available and kind of creating your own disclosure is probably the best way to do it. But it does seem like there is a hand that's being played here. Um through the mainstream media which is curious and it's a little different and it's like a step up um, as far as giving us information is concerned it's not that we didn't know what was going on it's just more of a, a validation for a lot of people that have been called crazy for a lot of years because they say they can see things and now we're just gonna have a lot of things that are going to make that more legitimate so which is nice you know I mean society is really strange in the sense that if if you are different if you see things differently feel things differently outside of what we have been taught growing up in the public schools there must be something wrong with you there's there's a problem you need to see a doctor Um, and that's no joke it's been that way for a very long time and that's pretty much how they kind of controlled us and keep us quiet and to keep us from making sure that we don't mention anything um but it seems like that's coming to an end and which which is a good thing it'll it'll help a lot of people i feel so the pentagon admits to having a ufo uh, investigative unit that was thought to be disbanded in like 2012 or 2011 and they never really disbanded it so they also say they have found an off-world vehicle. So, I mean, if that's not disclosure, what do you have? But, you know, if you really look at 
uh, all the legends from around the globe. And, you know, I think Raven's in the house and, and he's shared a lot of the Cherokee ones, um, you know, coming from his lineage. It's just common knowledge. Yeah, there's there's other beings out there. They've always been there. They've always been there. And that, in actuality, you know, the last several thousand years uh, has been like the least interaction that we've had, really. And usually there was a lot more interaction. All the legends say the gods walked amongst us. And if the gods can have uh, interaction, have sex with humans and create offspring, then obviously they're humanoid beings, or at least some of them are most definitely humanoid beings. There's all different types of beings out there. And so, you know, that's that really changes our perspective on things. The universe is teeming with life, teeming with life. And again, when you, when you look to the, the Hindu books, they talk about tens of thousands of different types of humanoid life in our galaxy alone. So it's teeming. We've just been kind of on, on a lockdown. And, you know, we are a lot on lockdown right now. Uh, but the lockdown, as far as the veil being thrown over the fact of extraterrestrial and inter- interdimensional beings, uh, being amongst us is is being uh, torn asunder and just spread wide open, and that's what's coming right now. That, but what's going to be wild is the fact that we're going to have this going on while we still have the dark forces pushing their agenda um, for the inoculations. That the soul, the biggest purpose of these inoculations is slowing down or stopping the ascension process because as we keep going up in consciousness and again I've talked about FBI and the CIA studies that showed in these times we were going to get a hell of a lot more intuitive Uh, in fact you know our DNA is being uh, it's being set right after intervention that basically inhibited so much of our abilities there are Chinese legends that say at one time man was like the gods himself and we had all sorts of abilities but our chakras became blocked they were blocked on purpose the flow of the life force energy was blocked and I've been talking about on EE arts a lot of a lot about kundalini and how do you awaken your kundalini because you know kundalini awakening is necessary for your light body and for your Merkaba and to become really all that you can be. And, you know, the hints are everywhere. They're all over the place. You know, we see all the references to it, you know, and to the pineal gland and just how important that is and awakening that energy at the base of the spine. It's the key to all this. And many people now are developing Merkabas and their Kundalini is coming online and they're finding that they're way more intuitive and there's just a knowing again gnosis the word gnosis knowing it, it's experiential it's something that you experience it's not a, an intellectual thing it's not something to be memorized and learned it's something to be experienced and all that is happening right now it is and i i do believe a lot of this information that's coming from the sun is awakening the kundalini And, you know, it's the energy work and the mantras and the other work that you do helps it come into balance. Um, I mean, it it does bring about a lot of changes on on the body and can be confusing or sometimes it can just be really, really good. But I don't think we have a choice in the matter. I do believe the sun is making this happen. And I also kind of feel that these, um, I don't even want to say that say that word these things that we're going to be faced with is going to help is going to try to hinder um, the natural efforts of the sun yeah the whole thing with sunblock mm-hmm. you know that that really I, I I'm trying to think when did that come out was it in the 60s uh, but anyway it was kind of timed with the spiritual awakening that started way back then and of course you know they want to get you to lather yourself up with all sorts of toxic chemicals and create tremendous fear of the sun because you know the sun is the agent of change that changes and restores our dna 
to where it was before and is going to bring our consciousness to a point where it cannot be under their control anymore. All their lies and their illusions, it's just a house of cards that's starting to crumble. Yet they do have other cards they're going to play, and they, they are going to play the V card, which we have talked about. That is going to be rolled out in the midst of you know the war that's developing as well. And again, it's it you know you could look right to uh, Revelation. You can't buy or sell without that mark, quote unquote, uh, of the beast system. And this is a beast system that we're living in. It's it's the system of uh, the enemy, Satan. Right? Satan is just means the enemy, the adversary, the adversary of humanity. So it's it's a race that's not human, and but it is controlling humans. So we find that we are actually in this intergalactic, interdimensional war, and that reality is much more akin to Star Wars than, than so much of what we grew up being taught in the history books. Yeah, and there's a lot of beings out there. You know, I don't feel we're going to be on our own. Um, I think what they're trying to prevent us from discovering is that there are a lot of entities and a lot of beings that we can reach out to and that will assist us you know through this journey very good beings too and that's that's what they're trying to stop they're trying to stop that gnosis from happening they're trying to keep people divided by telling them that there's only one one true god and you absolutely have to follow that god and you know cause um division and I, I never really understood that, you know, how people could say that. And there's 10 different churches and every single church said that their God's the only true God. Um, how, how could that be? I, I, I always got stopped at that question. How could that be? And we're coming in on a time now where we are just simply knowing that things are not how they've been painted. Things are not how they've they've been uh, portrayed to be things are very different and we have a lot more control over our journey than than we think we do exactly and then like you know Taoism, there is one ultimate source but the source that can be named is not the ultimate source so as soon as you name something it's it's not quite it but yet it's it's beyond our comprehension in these minds but then we have so many wonderful examples of how to be uh, from Krishna to 3,000 years later, Christ. And so, you know, there's so many benevolent beings out there that have shown us how to live in harmony, how to come together, and to be in uh, unity. And, and that's the next place to go is that unity consciousness. So uh, there's a lot to share with you guys. And I wasn't sure if she was channeling or or just or just getting you know straight messages the way it came through things have been different uh lately because you know they've been trying to bypass the heart issue which which really limits us it's still kind of limiting us yeah. to a degree um you know there's discomfort that comes through when she's getting the messages well i right right now i'm letting whoever wants to come forward come forward and channel through me it is a little bit different but it is by passing the heart so it's not as bad anyway and she recognizes them and knows who these these uh beings are um as we've shared before so a lot of it comes from laurel who is pleiadian and of the galactic federation and uh is basically been watching and watching everything going on right now so I'm going to share this with you guys and hopefully you can hear it well. And a protective bubble. And he's very gentle. He's very kind. And so the first part was coming through about Hanuman. Um, because as I've shared with you guys before, there are these beings that are, well, they're said to be immortal. They're like demigods. And there are some that are still on the earth, and Hanuman is one of them. Uh, it's, he's still on the earth plane. He hasn't left it. Um, 
and is just basically awaiting for this time and is that very very active right now because now is the time when things are going to get pretty hot and heavy and uh the battle of the battles of the gods will be seen in the skies over our heads again just like they were thousands of years ago goes to great lengths to take care of those that dedicate themselves. Three months once the war starts of somewhat uh, new normalcy, what we're used to right now, sort of, but then things will change. Yes, that's what the timeline shows, is that we have three months of normalcy where we can function and move about and then there is going to be a disruption um, this is what the timeline is showing of services and people it's going to be a difficult time for about I'm 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 seeing like a length of time of six months is going to be very difficult for people uh, to get by. And then I'm seeing how they're going to offer things like uh, to make our lives easier. They're going to offer vaccines um, so you can go anywhere, do anything without any restriction. Um, and that way they have total control. It's, it's not a very nice scenario. We, we all need to get ready. So they are going to push the vaccines even while the war is on. I can't, I can't pinpoint exactly what their angle is going to be, but they're going to fit the vaccines in there. The vaccines are going to play a big part of how everything unfolds and for them to have control and maintain control, the vaccines are necessary. Otherwise, because of the increase in consciousness and what's happening with the ascension process, the masses would move outside of their control? People would, people will start figuring out how to move outside their control. They don't have too much time because we are waking up at such a fast pace right now. And the vaccines do hamper, they stop the DNA from unraveling, they stop the evolution of humanity or they cripple it and they slow it down and they're very well aware of this yeah that's exactly what we've been feeling and so how long do you feel you had said that the war is almost imminent it's very close. It's it's a matter of it's a chain of events that's going to happen. Uh, <clears throat> things are going to happen in rapid succession, and then we're going to have the war, and then we're going to have about a three month time period where we have services, uh, and then after that, um, it looks like there's going to be <clears throat> about six months of a very difficult time. People are going to survive. It's not going to be highly devastating but people are going to be very uncomfortable without their with without their creature comforts people will make new inventions they will learn new things it's actually a period of growth so it's it's not necessarily to be feared but to be embraced so that we can grow into this new world into our own evolution So it's how big will this war be then? Is it going to be over there somewhere else other than the U.S. at first, or does it come to the U.S. quickly as well? There's going to be shots taken on U.S. soil um, where there's sleeper cells who are waking up now, but they're going to wake up more they're going to cause more problems, more devastation, slow down the economy even further. So it is going to be a, a world war everywhere. 
And do you foresee this having any sort of uh, nuclear exchanges, even of a limited kind? We're doing everything we can to stop that from happening at all because it does it does cause problems with the whole galaxy it's a ripple effect everyone's affected so those we wish to disarm and make sure that they can't be used for what they were intended for So what are we to look for? You said it's going to be a series of events. Is there a particular scenario that will probably play out, play out such as keep an eye on ta Taiwan or keep an eye on Libya or Syria or is it going to is it going to start with the sleeper cells or, or will the sleeper cells become active? after some triggering event somewhere else? It is going to be a triggering event <clears throat> somewhere um, that involves U.S. troops and Chinese troops, Russian troops. I, I can't see clearly what that triggering event is going to be, but we are going to have disclosure. That's, that's one of the things that they're doing uh, in anticipation of the war because there is going to be ships that are going to be in our midst and we're going to be able to see them. They're kind of being forced to play this hand of disclosure right now. And then after that, you'll see triggering events. After those triggering events, it's, it's going to... War will break out. It, it'll get difficult. Whose ships will we be seeing? Are we going to be seeing the Greys, the Draco? Are we going to be seeing the Galactic Federation? Are we going to be seeing other uh, other beings' ships as well? They're showing me a variety of ships. It's not just going to be one. It's going to be several. There's going to be light ships. There's going to be plasma ships. There's going to be mechanical ships. Uh, there's going to be beings of all kinds. They're being forced to play this hand because they're going to show up whether they disclose or not. Okay, and we better stop here. Okay, so that's that's what we uh, got today. And so, I, and I reached out to a, a friend of mine, like I've told you about before. Sometimes. It's good to, you know, get others' opinions as well, always, in, you know, what you're sharing. Now, this one's tied into um, a lot of top politicians talked talked about this person before. And uh, they were, the date they shot back to me was November 14th, which to me feels maybe 10, 11 days too late. Um, I think I, I, my, my gut is telling me it's going to happen like November 2nd, like right before the election. Um, but sh they were saying the 14th. And it sounds a lot to me like it, perhaps an EMP event where we, we lose the grid, we lose everything, and it's just that disconnect. So if that's the case, um, if you know somewhere around that first week in November, you're counting back. So we're looking at October and Sep September and August. So you know, more than likely it would be that the war would start pretty much any time between now and maybe uh, the middle of August. Everybody's been talking about September, 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 and we know come November things are going to be, it's just going to be uh, kind of like that out of control part of a roller coaster ride, you know, when you know, the pit of your stomach just goes whoosh. <laughs> yeah, and, and it is quite difficult to get exact dates because it's, more like um, things that, that happen in a certain uh, amount of, or things that happen in, um, 
so it's just difficult to describe how hard it is to get a date because there's they don't go by time it's more like by event so they watch the events unfold and they can give you somewhat of a guesstimate and then there's you know timelines can and do change and I, I think that's a big part of why they really kind of get after me to raise my vibration and tell you guys to raise your vibration because if if our vibration rises up it's it's not going to be as bad as it would be if we let ourselves really down into a low vibratory state it, it seems like our vibration has something to do with the way things unfold and how they affect us and um things of that nature and i got your email uh susan just you know looking at that um it's interesting there's a lot a lot a lot a lot going on and let me see if i pulled up to go over it with you guys So this is a, a PDF, it's 11 pages that I'm going to get the link straight on here for anybody that wants to check it out. It would not surprise me at all. Um, so basically it says there's a startup in San Francisco that most folks haven't heard of, House Canary, put the words together. Google funded startup, still private, deep pockets. You know, real estate evaluations using AI, latest data. I suspect they are poised to purchase U.S. real estate as part of a massive eminent domain scheme. Um, we've talked about that. I've talked about all the provisions uh, that have been put in by executive orders. Uh, executive orders, most people don't <laughs> realize just how much of our rights have just been just completely dissolved through executive orders. It's incredible, and and I've touched on this before, not only in times of national security issues, which we obviously are going to have with WW3 um, underway. They can come to your house. They can knock on your door. They can take your property from you. They could confiscate all the food, all the supplies, all the weapons you have, and put any of us into a work detail. This is all stuff that has been put into law going through the different, um, you know, the different presidencies that we've had. Obama put a ton of these into effect. And, and Tr President Trump has put a bunch into effect as well where, where they could go after your property even outside of the U.S., anywhere in the world. So, I mean, if you were able to hightail it to Costa Rica, able to hightail it to the Canary Islands, uh, they could still, the U.S. government can say, you know, you are, um, you know, a person of interest for national security reasons and come and, and lay claim to your property in the Canary Islands or Costa Rica or wherever. And, and all this has been going through. And think about what's going on right now with, uh, yeah, obviously, so many people can't pay their mortgages. They can't pay their rent. And, you know, there's going to be a massive amount of foreclosures. Uh, rural property is being bought up left and right right now. Everybody is starting to recognize, you know, we got to head for the hills. It's, it's time to head for the hills, get out of the cities. Uh, so, again, it's creating a massive rush there. So, yeah, I, I don't doubt what, what, um, what she is saying here. So you see, a folks who have st stated current on or stayed current on real estate mortgage loans are reporting they haven't been credited. Many are trying to straight it out to no avail. Others have missed mortgage payments due to obviously the economy and the situation. A colleague mentioned there are those credit card holders who have recently discovered that their rainy day credit card with five thousand available is now reduced money available balance or a card has been canceled. If they plan to use the card for upcoming mortgage payments, it's not going to be available. 
and the ev evil ones are, appear to be poised for a mass eminent domain scheme. Just think about it. Every time we've had, you know, these bank uh, collapses and stuff, of course, the banks get bailed out because it's the banks that control everything. They're just taking money, shifting it. It's it's ridiculous. You know, they consolidate power and everything time after time. Every one of these cycles that comes through, it just is more consolidation. And so perhaps this would be a much, much bigger uh, consolidation that's going to go on right now. And yeah, pennies on the dollar. So, and you know, war is coming. This is, you know, it, it's just more fuel for the fire. Yeah, it is. A lot of changes going on, a lot of different things happening that we don't understand, that we're not privy to, that they they keep from us, and it can throw us off guard. And that's another reason why spiritually we need to be find, able to find our center as quickly as possible. And the more you can do that, sit down and meditate and find that, contentment within your heart the faster you'll be able to find it if things go crazy really really fast it's important you, you find that place in your heart so many of us are being contacted by the benevolent beings by you know the, the galactic federation the pleiadians the octurians uh as well as others and, you know, just looking at what you guys are saying in the chat rooms, yeah, many of us are being uh, awakened now. And again, it's getting hard to sleep through the night, that's for sure. There's so much going on. And, you know, a lot of us are being directed and guided to new places, even maybe, you know, where we didn't, had, hadn't, you know, thought about before. Um so again, we probably have a very sh small window to get ourselves situated and set somewhere where we could be comfortable with the thought of losing all power and losing, you know, losing our contact with each other as well. So um, Cindy's tapping the, the watch on me because we, we do have another person scheduled and we're trying to come up... Um, and give this what, what I just felt was super, super urgent, um, super urgent. You know, we have to get this across. And again, I hope people will use the tools that we've been putting up on EE Arts as far as uh, these are things that can really not only help you cope, uh, as, as I was showing uh, mantra yesterday and we talked about the Sri Yantra for meditation, these things will help speed up your evolutionary process within you. It's going to help speed up the ascension process. It helps smooth out the energies because the ascension process could be uh, a bumpy road for sure at times. It, it's not easy and it can be very, very uncomfortable and painful at times because we're being faced with all of our crap that literally is coming to the surface. A lot of times it's buried physically in the body. And in Qigong and in acupuncture, we call it Lao channels. These Lao channels are actual, actual physical locations where things that you haven't dealt with, things that you can't face, get buried in the body and then later on cause real aches and pains and dis-ease. So part of this process right now that we're going through is just you got to get rid of it all. We have to process it, let go that which is no longer serving, and move forward. And so, you know, Cindy and I, um, the videos in the upcoming week or two, we'll still have a few days of normalcy. Then after that, um, things might be a little bit more sporadic as we're going to be doing um, a lot more intensive meditation um, out in the middle of nowhere. And that's part of, and that's part of what we are being led to do right now um, because this is the final preps before you know things really go crazy it, yeah it is you know it's really time to go deep figure out how how is that going to look for you it's really important oh thank you miss energy she says love to eea fam thanks for all you do mike and cindy thank you miss energies we appreciate it much love sister we appreciate you uh every all the beautiful people here in this family uh, I'm so glad so many of you have gotten connected with each other. That's a wonderful thing. Um, we need to. And we need to come together and survive 
really, if you look at the prophecies, what's going to come about this is people are going to come back together into small tribes, and it's going to be more of a tribal society again. And, and that's how we're going to start to come together and create our own alternative system outside of this beast system uh, by supporting each other and simply working together as l larger families. Yeah, yeah, and it, it'll be different. It'll be take some adjusting, but you know, it'll be it'll be better. There's going to be a lot of things coming up that are going to be new to us and challenges, and I think it's just really good to look at it as and embrace it. Embrace the change. It's going to be difficult, but embrace it because no matter what it looks like, it is change for the better. It's the outcome is going to be better. It is. It is. And uh, they're losing their grip. So we will take heart there. And it, it's going to be a, a wild new world for sure. And thank you, Sister Susan Donahue. We love you. We are Team Humanity. And humanity is going to survive and the planet's going to survive. Uh, although it is going to, we, are, we know what we're, what we're faced with. We understand this. And, uh, you know, I think, I think a lot of us are ready for it. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been working on it and people are going to come to us for with questions and we're going to have some answers because we have spent this time going within um doing the work, researching all the things that needed to be researched. So we're going to be like walking encyclopedias kind of for the new new age. And yeah, there's there's a lot of people in Florida as as well as you know so many different parts of this country. So as always, guys, much much love. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. And if anybody needs to reach out to us, just reach out to us at e e a r t s at Proton Mail or Evolutionary Energy Arts at Gmail uh, dot com. And thanks for your patience with us getting back to you. Uh, it, it's just been a super busy time. Anybody that needs uh, energy work, any help coping, anything like that, again, we just work on a donations basis. Um, so feel free to, to reach out to us, and we'll help everybody as we can. We love you guys. You're beautiful. And it's an honor to have you guys as part of our family. It, it truly, truly is, you guys. God bless and namaste. God bless. Namaste, guys.